Hi everybody, Jonathan here with another Twin Motion video and today we're going to be looking at the new Quixel plant libraries that have just been added in the last couple of weeks and these are really great for garden designers. As you'll see there's some lovely quality new plants of very sort of common uh, species that you're going to really really love. So I've got a really nice little tutorial for you to enjoy and I hope you enjoy the video and thanks for watching as ever. And today we're going to be looking at the new Quixel plant libraries that have just been introduced into the latest Twin Motion. So as you can see, I'm currently on the Quixel website. Uh, I'm really just enjoying the uh, trailer for the 90 days in Unreal Engine. These look amazing, some of these scenes. But for those of you who have not been tempted to try Unreal Engine yet, due to perhaps its complexity and depth, um, Twin Motion is a really good bet for you. So let's take a look at the Megascans library. And what you're going to notice in here is that we've now got this new collection of garden plants that only came out on June the 10th, uh, so not long at all ago. So if we go to the collection, you can see within here there's some really nice new assets. And I know this is something that my garden design clients have been looking for for quite some time. We've got things like the boxwood. Uh, this is definitely something Twin Motion was missing before a bit of paradise, um, some lovely sort of ferns and so on as well. And you can see there's just a really nice collection of plants. Now if you do want to, you can click into any of those and obviously you can have a preview of them as well. And you can still download these if you're signed in as uh, individual files. And you'll notice that you still get the option to download these in 2K or 4K resolution. So if you need them in even higher quality, you can download them and you get all the different settings in here. But after having a quick browse through these, let's have a look how you can get these uh, directly in Twin Motion now. But I think it's actually quite nice to just go and study them in here because you do get a slightly nicer preview as well. Okay, so let's hop into Twin Motion. And I'm currently looking at a project um, I did a little while ago for basically just a, a tutorial uh, for a cube house, I called it, or grid house rather. Okay, so what we're going to do, let's sort of pan around to uh, an area of the screen where there's not too much going on. Uh, this area is fine, and let's add some of these new plants. So what you're going to want to do is if we just go right to the start. You're going to want to go to Quixel Libraries, then 3D Plants, and then here's the new section, the Garden Plants. Now most of these, uh, if you look through the different folders, I found uh, there's a lot under the flowerless option here. And you can see, I can open up this window here if I want to, and just have a kind of scroll through some of the plants. And there's a really nice new additional collection. Now what's really cool is, each collection itself uh, has a numerous amounts of plants in it, as you can see. And I've already downloaded a few. Now if there's any more that you would like to download, all you need to do, for example, is just click on the little download button and you'll get the progress wheel spinning for a few seconds while it downloads, depending on the speed of your internet connection. I'd also recommend you click favorites. And the good thing about favoriting is, what that means is, uh, if I just click favorites on some of these items here, you'll see that these are all downloaded, then it actually makes it a lot easier for me to actually find the ones that I've kind of downloaded already by clicking onto my favorites filter and then I'll only see the ones that I'm either downloading or have downloaded. So when I click onto, for example, the Bay Laurel here, you'll notice we get another pop-up window called Create Variations. And what that allows me to do is actually create all of the variations uh, that I generate directly in the scene. So rather than dragging in the entire collection, I can now actually kind of drag in uh, individual plants very easily. So let's kind of just drag in a few of these. That was in fact the whole collection. So let's drag in a single item. There we go, you can see. So just drag a single item in. Let's kind of get in a bit tighter. I'll speed up my new speed. And let's just have a look at those in a bit more detail. So the really nice thing about the quick tool plants is when you import them uh, directly into Twin Motion is that they actually do have uh, the motion in that they respond to the wind and you can change the size of them as well. So that's really, really cool. You can also go into tint. And if you do want to, you can just sort of change the tints of those plants a little bit as well, just to get some sort of variation. 
Now do remember, a really good tip here is to hold shift down and drag off a copy. Now if you instance it, then what that means is, let's drag off a couple of instances, one more. So when you instance it, all of those plants are gonna to change together. Okay, so if I change the tone or the hue here, the color, they're all gonna change as you can see. Or if you just want one of them to change, then all you need to do is a right click, a break the instance for example, and now that you'll see I can kind of completely change the color of just that one on its own. So it's just very, very cool indeed. Okay, so let's have a look at a few of these other plants. Um, the boxwood I'm really excited about. Now, these are quite heavy, I will warn you. So when you do drag and drop them in, the reason I know they're heavy is because there's a big delay. And what that means is uh, Twinmotion is loading the file. So you've got to be a bit careful with adding too many of these to your project. As you can see, this can have the uh, potential to slow the file down. So just watch out for that when you add these very high resolution plants from Quixel. Okay, so you can see we've uh, managed to kind of finally load in our um, boxwood, if you like. And you can kind of understand why now it's a pretty big, hefty file. If you look at the detail, it's absolutely lovely. And as I say, it moves and responds to the kind of weather and the wind conditions as well. So you can kind of grow this and size it a little bit. And don't forget, we can always then hold the uh, shift key down and just duplicate a few copies. Let's just make a few copies of that across, just to make a really nice sort of high resolution hedge, for example. But yeah, these look absolutely fantastic. And I'm very, very impressed. Let's just go full screen for a moment and take a look at that. Um, so the quality of these is absolutely astounding. As I say, the word of warning is just watch out for the file size. But you can see my twin motion is handling this pretty good. Um, so as well as the new Twixel plants, uh, the other thing that I really want to just test out with this is the path tracing. So to do that, I'm just going to pop out into my scene. Let's actually create a, a new image here. And for this new particular image, I'm just going to turn on the path tracing capabilities. Now we've looked at this a few times in other videos. Um, one of the things I do advise is set your low and medium and high settings. Only use the high settings for your final renders. Let's go on to the medium settings and you should see that it renders pretty quickly. So how lovely does that look? Uh, the detail of these new Quixel plants is absolutely astounding. So really, really good um, quality plants. And it's great to see that Twinmotion is now adding these as standard to the Twinmotion libraries. All you need to do is just download them. So let's have a quick look at one more library here as well. Uh, we'll go to the uh, yuccas, one of my favorite plants actually. And uh, let's click onto this one here and let's drag and drop it in. Again, you get a bit of a clue to how big the plants are simply by um, the amount of time it takes to kind of drag and drop in. So these are definitely a bit faster than uh, the boxwood here. And let's turn off the path tracing just while we're working just to kind of make that a bit zippier. So let's just drag a few more of these in. I think we'll go for that one this time. Drag and drop and release. Now let's turn the path tracing off just while we're working. I would definitely advise you turn your path tracing off while you're working. So what do you think guys? These are really, really nice. Um, just to finish off this scene, let's put some dried leaves. Oh, look at that, it looks absolutely amazing. So these leaves are different from the twin motion standard ones. And what's nice about these is, you open up the side panel, you'll notice they're divided up into different clusters. Okay, so um, as well as reviewing these new plants, uh, just wanted to mention uh, the, about the project that I'm working on at the moment. So let's just put this panel away for now. Let's just hide that completely. Now this project was started before path tracing was um, actually a thing and I've simply opened the project and converted it. So you can see that I've actually kind of put the path tracing on uh, a few of the images, but I just really want to show you how easy that is. For example, here's one of the images that I created uh, before the path tracing was a thing. And all I need to do in order to get the path tracing to work, of course, is toggle the button on and just change the quality settings to whatever is appropriate. So I'm just going to let that run on the medium settings. Uh, look at the difference between the normal rendered image and the path traced image. It's quite astounding. So basically with path tracing, these new Quixel plants and the other addition of things like the sky domes, 
we've just got absolutely fantastic rendering in the latest Twin Motion. So I do hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next ones.